Hi, it's Alex. It's Martin Luther King Day today, and I wanted to talk about some things related to Martin Luther King Jr. and related to some of the dialogue that I see happening right now. I think we're in this time of polarization. When I went on Google News, on the front page of Google News, I saw a headline from Fox News and it was, I don't remember exactly what it was called, but it was an article that was talking about how the left was like misusing or misinterpreting Martin Luther King Jr.'s words or movement and like putting him in like a different light, like putting spin on what he was really about. And similarly, I also signed on to Tumblr and I saw a lot of posts on Tumblr and it was talking about how white conservatives are doing pretty much the same thing. Like, this is the claim that, like, uh, white conservatives were putting spin on Martin Luther King Jr.'s, like, words and showing things out of context to make him look less radical than he was, and so on. And I want to ask some tough questions. I want to ask questions of, like, is there a possibility of synthesizing these two viewpoints? Because, like, at first glance, like, I think most people would tend to want to take sides, whether you're on the side that would agree with that Fox News article, or whether you would be on the side that would agree with most of the stuff being posted in these left-wing activist circles on Tumblr. And I think that in this sort of back and forth, there's some nuance that I see getting lost. And I want to delve into that. And I think there, there are two key things here, there are two key ideas, and, at least from the way I understand Martin Luther King Jr.'s life, and his whole, like, type of activism, and his philosophy, like, what he was about, the way I understand it, there's the synthesis between this idea of love, and loving your enemies, and changing people through loving them, and at the same time, really putting your foot down, and not allowing people to be moderate in the sense of, like, resisting change because it's happening too fast. I don't think that these ideas need to be in conflict with each other, but the way that I'm seeing this dialogue getting cast, I think that these two ideas are somehow cast as, like, opposed. So I want to deal with the, this issue of white moderates. I think moderate is a little bit of a loaded term. Like, sometimes people might characterize me as a moderate because I advocate for respectful dialogue, and I don't tend to take, like, far left or far right viewpoints on everything. Like, I like to look at all the different perspectives and say, well, is there anything valid in this? And, like, people might say, okay, that's a moderate. I don't think that's what Martin Luther King Jr. was talking about when he was talking about white moderates. These moderates, I don't think they're really what I would call a moderate at all. They may have been called moderates back then, they may have identified as moderates. But like, if you looked at what was going on back there, if you read the whole context of a lot of the quotes about white moderates, like if you read the letter from Birmingham Jail, for example, that's like a really great piece. I recommend reading that if you want to delve into this stuff. If you read that, you see that this whole, like, concept of a white moderate, they're white people who, they openly say, oh yeah, I support the civil rights movement, I support desegregation, but like, this is happening too fast, we're not ready for this change, we need to slow down a little bit, like, we can't have full desegregation yet, like, yeah, it's a good idea, but like, kind of like, not too much too fast. That's what he was reacting against. And I think that that standpoint is problematic in a lot of ways. And one of them is that if you oppose segregation, you can kind of drag your feet as much as you want, while not taking responsibility for the fact that you're opposing it. And that's really problematic. I think, like, if you're sort of, like, you can say, oh, I support this thing, but you're not actually doing anything to break it down. And I think that's bad because it allows people to kind of, like, avoid the social stigma of racism and things like that. Like, there's this sort of societal consensus that I think was growing back then, and 
it's still not a complete consensus nowadays, but there's the societal consensus that racism is bad. And I think that like this sort of like moderate viewpoint of like change is happening too fast is a way for people to avoid taking responsibility. I don't think that's the same as a type of moderation where you're saying, I am going to look for the good in other people, and I'm going to resist polarization in terms of this us versus them, sort of like, they're the enemy. I don't think that that type of polarization is what MLK stood for. Like, everything that I've studied about him. Like, it seems like he synthesized these two viewpoints of like, okay, I'm gonna stand up against this sort of heel-dragging mentality, this sort of like, oh, change is happening too fast. I'm gonna stand up against that, and I'm gonna say, hey, we need change to happen right now, we can have change happen right now, I'm gonna make change happen right now, we are all gonna do this. Like, that, that is awesome. That's what I want to see happen. Um, it's a synthesis of that perspective with this idea of like, I want to love everybody. Now loving someone doesn't mean agreeing with them. Loving someone doesn't mean being submissive, doesn't mean being submissive when you are being oppressed, it doesn't mean being submissive when you see other people being oppressed. Um, there's this whole like, thing of like, non-violent activism and civil disobedience, and it's, it's weird how distant that is to me right now. Like, when I think about it, I don't see much of that around me. Like, I've seen some sort of civil disobedience actions where like people, protesters, are getting out in the street and stuff, but like, by and large, the stuff that I see in society nowadays is pretty hateful. Like, I see stuff on Tumblr all the time that is hateful towards white people, hateful towards cis people, and I also see hate directed at black people, trans people, I've been subjected to some of this myself, I get anti-Semitic comments on my YouTube, I get like all sorts of hate comments on my YouTube. Like, and I see people like kind of reacting against this, like if they're members of, of oppressed groups, or they're like trying to like show solidarity with them, by kind of engaging in that hate themselves. And I don't think that's what MLK stood for. It's certainly not what I stand for. I want us to distinguish these two concepts. Like, embrace this idea of like, radicalism, we can make change happen right now, but also embrace the idea of like, embracing love as a transformative force. Like, the idea is if we see someone and they're opposing us, we want to stand up against the bad things that they're doing, by loving them as a person, and helping them into a place of doing good things. Which is really different from like, saying like, oh I hate you, like you're the enemy, and like, putting that person down, demonizing them. I think it's good to talk about how someone else's actions are harming others, I think it's not good to sort of focus on the negative in other people and like, condemn the person, if that makes sense. I wonder sometimes if some of this has to do with religion, like, I see a change in our society, like, Martin Luther King Jr. was Christian, and he was motivated by a Christian value system, and I see Christianity kind of on the decline in our society. And I don't necessarily agree with everything about most forms of Christianity, but I think that one of the things about it that is really awesome and powerful is this idea of loving all people, loving our enemies, which is not the same as agreeing with what they're doing. Um, I wish we could retain that even as religion becomes less influential, and I think that's something that people of any religion or non-religious value systems can still embrace to varying degrees. So yeah, that's what I have to say about this. Happy Martin Luther King Day! Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you if you have any quibbles with anything that I've said, I'd love to explain any of this more if you have any questions. Yeah, thank you.